In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. Dear friends, today's readings invite us to pay attention to the presence of the Lord in our lives, and especially to His commandments. As we enter into the Eucharist, we acknowledge those times when the Lord is not as present in our lives as we would like Him to be, as we ought to have Him be. We acknowledge those times when we have not been faithful to His teachings, to His invitation to love one another as He loves us. So for those times, let us uh, say together, I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may He forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant that your people, we pray, Almighty God, may be ever watchful for the coming of your only begotten Son, that as the author of our salvation himself has taught us, we may hasten alert and with lighted lamps to meet him when he comes who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen a reading from the prophet isaiah thus says the lord your redeemer the holy one of israel i am the lord your god who teaches you to profit who leads you in the way you should go. Oh, that you had paid attention to my commandments. Then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Your offspring would have been like the sand and your descendants like its grains. Their name would have never been cut off or destroyed from before me. the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response is, He who follows you, Lord, will have the light of life. Please repeat. He who follows you, Lord, will have the light of life. Blessed indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the path with sinners, nor abides in the company of scorners, but whose delight is the law of the Lord, and who ponders his law day and night. Our response, he who follows you, Lord, will have the light of life. He is like a tree that is planted beside the flowing waters, that yields its fruit in due season, and whose leaves shall never fade, and all that he does shall prosper. Our response, he who follows you, Lord, will have the light of life. Not so are the wicked, not so. For they, like winnowed shaft, shall be driven away by the wind. For the Lord knows the way of the just, but the way of the wicked will perish. Our response, he who follows you, Lord, will have the light of life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord will come, go out to meet him. He is the Prince of Peace. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to the crowds, To what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their playmates, We played the flute for you and you did not dance. 
we sang a dirge and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, today's readings are very beautiful as, and very challenging at the same time. The Lord laments, Oh, that you had paid attention to my commandments in the first reading. And in the psalm we see that all those who follow the Lord will be blessed. Blessed indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, etc. He is like a tree that is planted beside the flowing water. So this great promise in following the commandments of the Lord. However, in the gospel, Jesus is disheartened because when John the Baptist came, people said he has a demon, he's possessed. When Jesus comes, they say he is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Why? Do we find it so difficult to follow the commandments of the Lord, to recognize the Lord's presence? There are many reasons. Generally, human beings are slow spiritual learners. We are slow learners in the department of spirituality. And that has many reasons. In the case of the, at the time of Jesus, the reason seemed to be the, the intransigence, the stubbornness of the religious leaders who had some excuse or the other. John the Baptist was too holy, seemed possessed. Jesus seems too secular and too liberal. There could be also laziness as a reason, spiritual laziness, why we do not recognize the mandate of the Lord in our lives. There could be also dissipation, distraction, simple greed, the temptations of the world, the lure of the world of lucre and power to many reasons. What exactly is or are the commandments of the Lord? Very simply, Jesus tells us, love one another as I have loved you. Or in the words of the prophet Micah, uh, act justly, uh, love with compassion, love compassionately and walk humbly. That's another way of looking at the Lord's basic commandments, to act justly. Saint Pope John Paul II insisted that if you want to have peace in the world, peace between nations, peace between communities, peace between persons, we have to build up that peace on the foundation of justice. Justice is important. Recognizing the rights of others and communities and nations. Mutual recognition. To love with compassion that means to recognize the dignity of other persons, whether they are rich or poor, whether they are healthy or not, whether they are old or young. To love them with the eyes, to look at people with the eyes of Jesus, to love with the heart of Jesus. And finally, to walk humbly, to recognize that all we are, all our successes, all our possessions are ultimately not ours. We are mere trustees, stewards of what God has given us. And one day these things also will be taken away from us. That should make us humble enough. Not to feel jealous and competitive about others because others also are trustees of their goods which are entrusted to them by the Lord. So to, to act with justice, to love with tenderness, compassion and to walk with humility. Let us pray that we are in some ways unlike the people that Jesus had to deal with at his times, uh, when, he, when they were neither willing to listen to John the Baptist or Jesus because they had some reason or the other. Let us not give excuses anymore. Let us challenge ourselves to see how we can best respond to God's mandate, to love one another as Jesus loved us. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring out to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Oswell our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us Lord we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb, Lamb of God, who take, take away the sins of the world, world have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment Thine. Lord Jesus, thank You for the blessings and graces You have given me through this spiritual communion.
communion and tiffin we await a savior the lord jesus christ who will change our mortal bodies to conform with his glorified body let us pray replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment we humbly beseech you o lord that through our partaking in this mystery you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through christ our lord amen the lord be with you and, and with your spirit may almighty god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit amen go in the peace and joy of christ our lord and savior thanks, thanks be to god, god.